So looking at these numbers, does anybody just take a minute and then raise your hand if you have an idea of what we can do with this? How can we open this wall? Penny, what are you thinking? Sure, you can come up with show me real quick. Because he's genuine, he's passionate, he's creative, he's fun. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that um, sticks out about him. He, he loves those kids. He loves them more than, more than anything. He doesn't know how special he is, and that's, that's what makes him so great. He would come up with these ideas of, let's start this year and we'll do a carnival theme in our classroom. And he had um, some ideas for teaching math, that we wouldn't just teach math, like our math block, we, we call the kids math magicians. And so I remember the first lesson, he came out with like a top hat and a cape and a magic wand. And um, you know, he was talking to the kids about how we were going to transform these numbers into other numbers. And you know, there's not a kid in the room that wasn't paying attention or focused on the lesson. It was one of those things where everybody growing up told me to be a teacher, be a teacher, be a teacher. I came across Cheryl Stockwell Academy, which is where I teach now, and just reading about their mission and philosophy, it just aligned perfectly with what I felt education was about. He is like a great teacher. He's really always funny. He like it's so fun that when I'm at school with him, I feel like I'm not even at school. I feel like I'm still at home. He like does adventure stuff with us. He has a theme each year, and he it's like that's really great because I like adventures and I like fun. Uh, to me, he's just the epitome of an educator. He uh, brings out the best in in our children. Um, I get a little actually emotional when I, when I talk about him. Mm -hmm. um, my older son was very very uh, timid when he went to his classroom, and he came out just a just a, a child that was. Full of, um, full of himself and self-confidence, um, and he really changed in those two years. He got Caleb to laugh at himself. Uh, he, he wanted to be perfect all the time, and he got him to understand that that's not, not what you need to do. You need to you know, try your best, and it's okay if you make mistakes. So to have that change in Caleb's mindset has been just wonderful for our family as well. We're lucky. I wish there were more um, males and more Mr. Hiskas out there in elementary education. I think there is a, a lack of males in, in teaching lower elementary. And I've always found that for a lot of it, there's a stigma about men in teaching at younger ages and things like that. And I don't know, I think it's important. It's important because I, I see all these kids and I meet all these kids and a lot of them, um, some of them come from divorced families or they don't have a father figure or a positive role uh, model like that. And I feel like it's my duty to kind of step in and be that for them, somebody consistent every day um, that they see, that's positive, that shows those character traits that we're teaching, that just wants to, um, I don't know, be a, a part of their life in a positive way. And I think it's really missing uh, at this age level. He loves his children and he makes learning absolutely exciting for the students. He, he has a collection of hats and he wears different hats for different occasions and, and um, it's just so exciting to see him take on different personalities and everything with his students as far as making it enriching and enjoyable for them. So he's always finding a hook for them and always making learning fun for them. I think about what I need to teach or what is our goals for the, the unit or what's our goal for the term or the year and I, I kind of build off that, like how can I make it fun? How can I make it interactive? How can I tell a story? How can I make sure we're laughing while learning? One of the things that makes Mr. Hiska so special is that he is very much a rep representative of our five core philosophies in action. And what that looks like in a nutshell is that he creates a need-fulfilling classroom, a classroom that honors the human needs that all people have, that they have fun in their day, they have freedom in their day, um, they feel like they love are loved and that they belong somewhere, uh, that they um, have that their survival needs are met. They have power, they have choice in their day, and Mr. Hiska makes sure his students have time to, and choice in their day, to think about what they want to do, what they want to accomplish, set goals, uh, reflect on those goals, and make a new plan. We're allowed that freedom to try new things, and if they work, we can build on it and share it and have others you know, try it too. If it doesn't, well, we try again with something different. And I think a lot of schools, there's a pressure to just teach a certain way to teach to a test or uh, make sure everybody's doing the same exact thing at the same time. But at a charter school, I think with the right leadership, you have people who trust in you and believe in you and, and treat you as a professional and not just 
another staff member. And I think that's important for a teacher to feel like you're valued and a professional, that your ideas matter. And I think charter schools really give us that opportunity. He it challenges us and he makes math really fun. I like to come to school because of him every day. I'm really bummed when I don't get to come to school.